covered in oil because... I think there are significant nutritional gaps here. Okay, I have some ideas on how to make sure that this diet is balanced. So give me a little while, I'll go and prepare some stuff. And I'm back. Uh, so I gathered a few things from my pantry that I know will help to balance out this diet uh, so that you can use it long term uh, and you can feed it with absolutely no worries that all your bases are covered and you can actually get something that will be good for immune system for your dog's health. So first, uh, calcium. I really don't think there's enough calcium in that diet because it's so high in meat, so high in phosphorus. The thing that's important with calcium is not only do you need to meet calcium requirements, but you need to make sure that it's properly balanced with phosphorus. You always need more calcium than phosphorus. And when you have a meat-heavy diet, it means you need to add in more calcium, which is sometimes why high meat diets are associated with stones or any other kind of bladder issues. And that's not just because of the meat, it's because of the calcium that needs to be put in to balance out the phosphorus in the meat. That's why it's tough. So I really think you should add in one more egg with the shell, with the membrane, just like he did, all good. So add in one more egg, and it will also help to clear up some of the nutritional gaps as well, because eggs are fantastic. They do help to replace some organs in small amounts. But generally that was a kilogram, and one egg is a tiny amount for a kilogram of meat-heavy diet. So yes, two eggs with the shell, absolutely. So for the cooking, I would recommend that we actually use coconut oil instead of the hemp oil. Coconut oil is extremely heat stable. It's really good and it does contain some MCTs. Depending on where you get the coconut oil from, 40 to 60% of it would be MCTs, um, depending if it's virgin or not. So you will be able to get a lot of health benefits there and it'll help to heat up the food to the right temperature and it is heat stable as well. Now speaking of fats, there was no omega-3s in that diet. If the lamb heart or sheep heart was pasture-raised or grass-fed, then maybe there would have been some omega-3 in that fat in the heart itself, but that was a smaller part of the diet. So I, I think omega-3 is super important for long-term health and for joints and skin and coat and blah, blah, blah. So that's why I have my fish here. So salmon would be great. It will give you vitamin D and it'll give you the omega-3 fatty acids. And it's just an amazing source of protein as well. So you can absolutely substitute some of that chicken for salmon instead. If salmon is maybe beyond your budget, maybe he can't find it or anything. You can also use canned fish, like canned anchovies, mackerel, sardines. These are also great. They will have the vitamin D and they will have the omega-3 fatty acids inside as well. Um, I think in this diet, you would need about 120 grams of salmon or canned fish. Um, of course, you want to buy the one in water and then you rinse it just to make sure there's no added salt or brine or anything like that. Let's stay with stuff in the ocean. There was no iodine in this diet, which is super important for long-term behavior and metabolism because it's linked to hormone production. So I have some kelp here. So kelp is great. You can easily find it for humans and for pets. And luckily, all you need is about five grams in this entire diet. So you just take it, you just sprinkle it, boop, into the diet, and then you're done. It doesn't need to be cooked or anything. Kelp is my number one go-to for any home-cooked diet or home-prepared diet for cats or dogs, cooked or raw. As long as you give the right amount, five grams, like for this entire diet that he prepared, is more than enough iodine, so that's great. Next, we move on to vitamin E. Again, I don't know exactly how many seeds were in there, but it looked like a very small dusting. I think we could use up to 100 grams. Dogs have quite high vitamin E requirements, and especially if we're adding in some of these omega-3 fats, you need to make sure that there is plenty of vitamin E. So th these are not ground. Of course, you do want it to be ground. I'm just showing you what you could add in into your blender, into your mixer, into anything like that. Uh, 100 grams of pumpkin seeds. These are sunflower seeds, which are a little bit higher in vitamin E than pumpkin seeds. So this will be great. It will also help with zinc. Now, the last big thing that's missing, uh, zinc and copper, will be a little bit in the seeds. But because the amount of chicken was so much, it was, I couldn't think of a good way of balancing out the zinc. Adding in some chicken hearts instead of some of the chicken meat will help. Um, but if you want a sure fire fix every time, then we're gonna go with oysters. <laughs> oysters are super dense in zinc. <laughs> so here we have dried oysters. These are a little bit more economical and you can easily find them in your Asian grocery store uh, wherever you live or if you're in Singapore, any grocery store. For this diet, if it's dried, you could just use seven to 10 grams, depending on how dehydrated they actually are. Or if you're buying fresh ones or from a can that actually have the moisture in, then you would need about maybe 40 grams for this entire diet. And this would really balance out everything very, very, very well. And then we're only left with some of the vitamins. So vitamin K, 
I think maybe some of those vegetables could have been replaced with spinach. Spinach or kale or any leafy greens are higher in vitamin K. And this looks like a lot, right? This is about 100 grams, but because it, it's very voluminous. Once you cook it, it, as you know, you've done, used spinach before, I'm sure. So when you cook it, it just really, really clumps down into a very smaller amount, which is a lot more digestible, no pun intended. And then we're left with our B vitamins. B vitamins really depends on what organs you're using, what animals you're using, what fish also. So if you're using some of these fish and a lot of B vitamins should be fine, but you're still gonna be missing vitamin B1, which is not that high in fish that has been preserved. In fresh fish, then usually you're okay. So that's why I have here, what is this delicious smelling? I actually love the smell, it's very cheesy. This is nutritional yeast. Uh, nutritional yeast or brewer's yeast or most kind of yeast are completely safe for dogs and they are a great source of B vitamins and actually a lot of minerals as well. And a lot of studies show that adding a bit of these real yeasts into your dog's food is good for their gut uh, and does some beneficial immune modulation as well. Don't worry, it's completely fine and actually they love the taste, they love yeast. So adding a good handful into the food will only maybe make it even more tasty, good for those picky pets that he was talking about and will give you the B vitamins that you desperately need for your dog's metabolism as well. Now, a lot of people would say, well, why don't you just put liver instead? And I think that because, again, there was so much white meat, that if we were adding lamb liver or beef liver, more dense ones, by the time that we add enough to have enough zinc, then there would be so much copper that this would not be sustainable long-term. You would be adding in a lot more stuff. Those are dense in a lot of this. You may even end up with like too much vitamin A. I think it would be a bit difficult to balance it using liver only. If you add in some chicken hearts, then that would bring up some of the levels uh, and then you could maybe add in some liver to balance out both. But I think here what you have is a really sustainable, long-term and not too expensive uh, addition that you can add it over to his food. So I hope that helps. Again, please do use his recipe, but add this in because you want to make sure it's fully balanced long term. Comment below, follow us on socials on TikTok and Instagram, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.